Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Thanks for being with us here today as we talk about how to bring out the real you. That's right, bringing out the real you is the most important, possibly, thing that you can do to make the biggest difference that you're meant to make in this world. Are you bringing out the real you when you approach people in the world? For that matter, do you know who you really are? Have you taken the time to be alone and quiet, discover who you are, and then package that person, you know, brand you, so that you're authentically, genuinely who you are, and then share that person with the world? You need all three steps of that. You need the self-discovery. you got to know who you are in order to be able to put you out there. You've got to know how to present yourself, have that packaged in the right format, and then then you got to share that person with the world. So today I have three amazing guests. They're going to talk about the three different parts of that in their own life, using themselves as examples, as well as the companies they have. And we're going to show you how to be able to bring out the real you today. And with that, learn how to be a thriving entrepreneur. With that said, let's jump in to our first guest. Join me in welcoming Jacob Balbus. Hey, Jacob, how are you doing today? I'm well, Steve. How are you? I'm doing really great. So the book is called A Man Alone with God. What an amazing book. I'm so excited. I I loved reading through it myself, and I'm really looking forward to introducing it to people. To begin with, though, tell us just a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Um, Yeah, I um, let's see. I have two kids. um, Talk about being a father, um, and they're three and five. Um, They're my number one priority right now in life. Um, and after that, um, I'm kind of in a transition business wise. I, um, had a business, uh, restoring homes, uh, after water losses and fires and, and really did it, uh, because I like helping people. So, um, besides that, I love the outdoors. I love to hunt, I love to fish, um, love to go, uh, out on lakes and water and just, uh, have fun uh, enjoying God's creation. And you live in the perfect place for hunting and fishing, too. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people watch the TV show Yellowstone, um, but you actually live, I mean, you're up in northern Montana, but you actually live in that area where all of those things they show are the realities of your life. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the perfect place to um, explore and get out. I think, you know, as I look about it, there's um, a million places you can explore and and only so much time to do so. So it's a. It's a pretty, pretty neat, neat place. Love it. So let's talk about the book. The book is called A Man Alone with God. Um, talk to us about your intentions for the book. Why did you write it? Um, I wrote it uh, mainly because it helped me get through um, a season uh, of hardship um, and um, suffering. And uh, I mean, a lot of it was invited um, upon myself by me. Um, because of my decisions and my actions. Um, And I think people in today's society, they don't have an outlet or an understanding, even believers, um, of why bad things happen. I think that's a a question a lot of people ask, uh, why is this happening to me? Um, And so I wrote it as a um, possible way of helping people through um, their trauma, um, which I think is an overused word in today's society, but their trauma, their hardships, their sufferings, um, and, uh, and connected it to a relationship with God, which, uh, is what I believe is why those things happen, um, is because he's drawing near to you, um, and wanting a relationship with you, wanting you to look at yourself. Um, and so I had this season of, of hard times where a, a number of people, um, while good people, they refuse to look at themselves. Um, they, re- they thought they were perfect. They acted perfect. Um, they did things out of greed and 
desires of things of this world. And um, it, it was uh, at every point I was trying to connect the scriptures and, and, and the gospel and what the word of God is. And at every point, nobody wanted to, to live what they said they believed. Um, and so I went through this um, series of, of just figuring out that what, what the time we have on this earth is really short um, and, and that it's really meant to live for the one who created it. Um, and through looking at everybody else, they were judging me. They were wanting things that I had. I was living a way that I shouldn't be living. And um, it woke me up to what matters every day, um, which is, is Jesus and my relationship with him. So I love that. So, and I know this is kind of an unfair question, but what is your favorite part of the book? Oh, um, my favorite part of the book is uh, the part where I talk about my grandpas and my dad. Um, and it's because they taught me so much in life. They taught me um, things that like I took for granted, things that um, I didn't even realize they were teaching me. Um, and it's what it's what's helped me get through um, my life and, and hard things. And it's what's given me um, a mindset that uh, I need to have um, and to look at them now or, or just talk to my dad last weekend, even, um, you know, he, he was a great father and he is a great father. Right. And, and I like that part because as it correlates to God, God is our father. Um, you know, I'm his son and, and he's adopted me and, um, you know, I'm, I'm in his family. And, and so now you have the same kind of correlation of all the things that he's done and he knows that's happened in my life to love me. Um, and so I like that, that part because it's a, it's a dual um, kind of dichotomy where like, it's not just men of God that raised me, but it's the God who created me. That's my father. And, and that's why it's my favorite part. So. Can you give us an example of one of the cool things they taught you? Um, uh, I'm going to say the outdoors. So they, they, um, my grandpa taught me a lot of patience. Um, he taught me to, to think um, in a way where I identify every aspect before making a decision, every problem that I could have, every um, anything, right? Any, any situation um, to look at all aspects before going and making a decision. Um, and it's easy to forget that. It's easy to get emotional. Um, and go into a different mode where you make mistakes. And so he taught me to consider everything before doing. Um, and then my dad, uh, one thing that I appreciate is, is through sports um, and, you know, like failure. He taught me how to process through failure. Uh, he taught me how to um, recover um, and, and not blame anybody. Uh, even though sometimes we want to, um, but to blame myself and look at myself. Um, he taught me to um, work through hard things uh, physically um, and mentally. And, and he did that through um, the chores that we had to do growing up, um, the work that he made us do. Anything that I wanted, I had to earn it. Um, and that's something that, that I really appreciate, um, you know, is, is, not just to have success and get things, but to, to how to how to work to get them um, and to do it the right way. So. Absolutely. Going through a journey like what you've been on um, and the journey of reflecting on it as you've written the book, um, what is the one piece of advice that you would give to the younger version of yourself? You know, that age old, if I could just go back in time and tell myself this thing that I wish I would have known then, uh, what, what advice would you give you? Um, I'd probably give just the notion of, of none of this, nothing in this world matters, but you reflecting Jesus. Um, because really like I chased 
my dreams. I chased um, things, material things, like I was buying guns and uh, a new Bronco or, you know, um, going on trips, having fun, doing me. And, you know, I would, I would say that there's much more fulfillment and joy in life when you seek after God and you seek after the things of God and you are brought into those relationships that God brings you and not the relationships that you go seek out and find. That would, that would be the advice that I have. What do you hope to be able to, uh, you know, reach people with in this book? I think um, for me, the, the one thing that I would want people to um, understand is, is that we're all broken people. We're all, we all fail on a daily basis in some capacity. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's so that we can do God's will um, and we have forgiveness for that brokenness of sin. Um, I had a lot of people that didn't want to acknowledge sin. I had um, someone very, very close to me that I, I really loved scream, I have no sin to me. Um, and and so I think when you acknowledge your sin and you go to God on a daily basis and you say, you're God, I'm not, and you pray to him and you talk to him and you have an intimate relationship with him, he's able to fill you with positive things instead of negative things. He's able to use you to accomplish his, his will on this earth. And he's able to take you down uh, the path of life that he wants for you and use you a lot faster um, rather than you deciding what to do. Um, there's a, there's a fine line that we all kind of go on um, of, uh, and we were talking about this the other day in, in a group of men um, where it's your confidence in Christ or it's your ego. And, and there are um, men of Christ. And uh, I think everybody, every man deals with pride in some capacity. Um, and we take some of the scriptures of, of, you know, God saying what we can do and, and we ride that line of ego and confidence. And, and I have no confidence in myself. Um, I think my life has proved that, all my failures, everything, even despite what uh, abilities I have or what, um, you know, what, what measure of work ethic I have or what I, can, I know that I can do with my hands, I know that I can do far more when it's doing it for the Lord and I know that he can do far more uh, than I can. And at every point in my life, he's he's uh, quick to show me that. Um, and he's also quick to um, forgive me and, and to to restore, you know, after my failures. And and so that's the the important thing, I guess, is is when things don't go your way, when you don't get what you want, um, when uh, someone dies, when. Um, someone cheats on you when uh, you lose money or, or someone steals from you. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's it, it, If you look at it and change your mindset, it's it's the beginning of something really wonderful. Um, and, and I would hope that people take, uh, you know, their selfishness out of it. And and that's why I, I started it the way that we did. I, I started it is because we're all needing to acknowledge how empty and broken we are without God. But at the same time, uh, the reason why we ride that line of ego and confidence is because when we are filled with Christ, we are filled with his power. We're filled with boldness and strength that that is um, really hard to explain to non-believers. It's really hard to explain to people who don't know what that feels like and what that means. Um, and it's really hard to reciprocate that unless you have uh, a personal relationship with him and you allow him to fill you and come in. And, and I think ultimately, um, you know, there's, 
there's things that, that while scary initially in life, um, new challenges, new, um, new threats, uh, risks, liabilities, you name it. Um, they're scary to the everyday person at first. That's, that's our first thought. But when it's uh, Christ centered, um, that fear goes away and, and, and you kind of look at everything that comes into your life differently. You look at it um, and you're headstrong because you know, who's with you. Um, and, and that's the, the meaning of uh, besides, you know, salvation, obviously, but Jesus died so that he can be with us and he left his spirit to guide us. And, and we have to listen to, to that. We have to listen to his voice because there's so many other voices that take us down the wrong path. So. I love that. The book is called A Man Alone with God. It's an amazingly wonderful journey um, and it's very real and raw. I love how you did it, Jacob. Um, and I do encourage everybody. I put the link both in the comments as well as it's in the description. Uh, you can get A Man Alone with God for free today on Amazon and help Jacob out as we launch this book. Jacob, thanks so much for sharing the book with us. Uh, before I let you go, leave us just one last uh, little word of encouragement. Go to him on a daily basis and it will change your life. That's That's what I will say. Start with him in the morning, talk to him in the middle, uh, in the noontime, and uh, end your day with him every day. Love that. Do you get your copy of A Man Alone with God today on Amazon? Jacob, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Thanks, Steve. I love how Jacob has spent the time to really know who he is so he can be a thriving entrepreneur. <music> Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best-selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best-selling authors, and you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself and tell you, I know the world is waiting on your message. And I would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskStevekid.com and schedule a time to talk today. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur. Today, we're talking about bringing out the real you. Our first guest showed how he went on the journey to find the real him. Now, let's go to our next guest. Join me in welcoming Carol Kammerer. How are you doing today, Carol? Oh, I'm doing so well. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. To begin with, tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. So I am from Minneapolis. I show up in the world because LinkedIn is important to me. I think that everybody should be able to use it effectively. And so I show up in the world often um, on people's LinkedIn feeds with articles that I've written, um, tips, et cetera. And um the people that I work directly with are senior level executives, C-suite executives, helping them to create a brand online that represents them authentically so that they can attract their top talent they want to hire, um, wow their customers, and communicate their thought leadership. So what are some of the key elements? I mean, I've heard so many people's, uh, you know, reasoning and and that but what are some of the key things that a person really does need to look at when they're creating their brand especially on linkedin okay so um one of the things that we want to do is make a fabulous first impression and you know in the first 10 seconds about the only thing you can see is 
the banner image, which is the image behind your picture, the headshot of you, and your headline. So those things all really need to be customized, really need to be, you know, your very best work. So um, I like to start with making sure that you understand your brand. And so, you know, there's some just easy questions, uh, easy to remember at least. Um, what are the three things you want to be known for? What are your differentiators? Who do you serve? And what are your keywords? If we know those things, we can build a very powerful headline. Um, we have 220 characters to do that. And we can add some value to our um, background or that banner image. Um, there are people who have their own business and, and they could certainly use their logo in that banner. But there are many people that don't. And so I like to um, help them think about what is it that people experience when they experience that person? You know, are they like um, a lake at dawn that's perfectly um, silent? Are they like the rushing waterfall? You know, what image will evoke their brand? Um, and then, you know, to look for an image that that they can um, acquire online for that background. And it's important to note, we want to make sure that we get an image that you have the rights to be able to oh, use. Just because yeah. you see something on, on the Internet doesn't mean that it's just free for you to get to be able to grab it. So I just always got to put that disclaimer in there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Absolutely correct. Um, that is that is very important. So the um, the websites that I recommend to people who are looking um, are um, stocksnap.io, which is a free um, place to get images, and unsplash.com. If you can't get a free image from one of those or uh, from uh, um, Google Images uh, evoking that um, uh, Commons image. I don't know. It's it's a Creative Commons. Um, then I recommend um, Shutterstock, which is a paid um, subscription service. Absolutely love that. So we get some basics that people can come and initially see us. Then let's talk about interaction on, on, especially LinkedIn. You know, I mean, oh, you get yeah. so many people, you know, you got Gary V out there talking about posting, you know, 50, 60 times a day and oh. what really, uh, you know, is effective on LinkedIn. Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, um, if you posted once a day, you would have maximum effect. Um, because the way that LinkedIn looks at the posts um, is uh, first the, the post um, is tested with a few of your close friends. And if it gets some um, activity, uh, they might push it out farther. Um, they let it go for about four hours and, and then they know it's just not going to take off. Um, so if you had to post more than once a day, I would post four hours or more apart. 56 times a day does not work these days on LinkedIn. It may have worked when Gary Vee first said that, or maybe he just isn't um, aware of how they are um, handling the feed these days. But um, 56 times um, means that actually the second time you post, it cannibalizes any interaction that you might have had with the first post. Um, so it's it's not a good strategy. But publishing or posting and um, interacting every day is a wonderful practice. And then we've got the whole, you know, sales navigator and all the different ways you can connect with people. Um, 
What are some good practices with that? Well, connecting with people is important to be, I think, absolutely personalized. Um, when I get a connection request that's so obviously a bot, it it bothers me. And um, sometimes it will bother me enough to not connect. Um, many of the LinkedIn add-ons and also Sales Navigator, you can, you can set them up with the same message to lots and lots of people. But for best relationship building right from the start, you need to, to send a personalized message that says, hey, I noticed that you also went to my um, university and um, and that you are part of this and that and the other group that I'm part of and that we have a ton of connections. I'm thinking that it would be really fun to connect with you. If you agree, um, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> so some, you know, some reason why um, they might be interested in connecting with you. There's an old saying, um, and I'm old enough that I can use it. Uh, <laughs> people don't care how much you know until you know how much you care. Um, and I, I think that's lost a lot of times in initial responses because they're like, hey, I just saw that, you know, you need to buy my service. Um, you know, that's the oh, gist yes. of what they say. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I, have, um, I have an article that's called the joy of not being sold to, <laughs> and, you know, it, it really um, it talks about that notion that people think that a connection is equal to you'd like to buy from them. And that's, that's really, you know, not the case most of the time. Um, I think that salespeople need to have a relationship with people that they are, um, potentially wanting to sell to. And um, it, it doesn't happen in either the um, uh, the connection request or in the very next thing that you do. It's, it's like, come on, <laughs> let's, let's get real here. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I mean, another one of the things that I'm always talking to people is, um, have a plan, you know, don't just go out to it, but then also, um, you know, give the people a next step with you. Yeah. Uh, one of the other sides to it, you know, I mean, obviously you and I both hate being, uh, spam pitched to, but it's also when the person just sends you something that's so generic that you're not really totally sure what to do next. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, you just kind of want to wave, you know, it's like, can I still just wave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, um, it's, people people make connections for all kinds of reasons, and sometimes they're just trying to connect because they know that you know great people, and um, you know sometimes there isn't really a good next step. Well, and I suppose to some extent that comes back again to the initial question. Um, what is good for us and why should we be using LinkedIn um, and what's the purpose of it? Yeah, well, I think that um, really LinkedIn is all about relationships and that's not the same as connections. A relationship is where um, we know something about each other and we communicate with this vehicle. Um, I see their stuff and I go, oh, that's really good. And I comment. They see my stuff and they go, oh, that's really good. And they comment. Um, if, we're, if we're just going to wave, I suppose uh, like works, but um, it doesn't really move the needle for anyone. So in order to actually show that you're paying attention to someone, you need to um, have a response, one of those like kind of buttons, and then um, comment in five words or more. Because LinkedIn has specifically identified that engagement 
happens in five words or more, which means that all of those congrats, um, you go girl, uh, great article, thanks for sharing, none of those reach the five word formula for engagement. What they're trying to do is encourage people to actually have a conversation online. And congrats is not it. So what you're really saying is, let's relearn the art of what it means to have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, when I am teaching this, I say, look at their article. See if you, you know, if it's a listicle, for, for instance, you could say, I especially like point number three, because time and again, I have seen that in the companies that I consult with, or, you know, something to that effect. Um, point out something that essentially says, yes, and, because you are trying to add value to the person who originally posted by commenting, and then you're trying to add value to the people who are reading it. And then you're also trying to add value to yourself and your brand by showing that you pay attention and that you're bright and that you, um, you know, are on the money with um, your comment. Oh, there are so many people that need to work with you. So <laughs> tell us um, what kind of people do you prefer to work with? So. I do have services for a broad range of people uh, in the sense that I have um, my book, which is an award-winning book, LinkedIn for the Savvy Executive, Promote Your Brand with Authenticity, Tact, and Power. I have an online course for people who want to do it yourself um, in terms of uh, their LinkedIn profile. And that's available um, as well as my book on my website, which is carolkemmerer.com. And then I have my VIP offerings. That's where I spend most of my time. And I work with C-suite executives and senior level leaders who need to put their brand out there proudly. And they need to attract the talent they want to hire. They need to wow their potential customers and they need to um, showcase their thought leadership. So that's the level that I deal with in terms of a customized, done for you LinkedIn profile. I love that. So give us again the URL, the best place to go to get that from you. Absolutely. So the first thing that we have to know is how do we spell this last name, which is so hard. I know you'll put it in the show notes, but Kemmerer is a little bit hard to spell. So here it goes. It's got about twice as many letters as it needs. It goes K-A-E, then M-M, like Mickey Mouse, and he has two ears, E-R-E-R, Kemmerer. -E -R. So my website is carolkemmerer.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, by my name. and. Um, you can certainly find me on Google. I love it. Well, Carol, I really appreciate it. I cannot wait for some of the things I know you're going to help people with. Thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Love it. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. What is the brand that you look like? How do you represent yourself authentically? And how do you be a thriving entrepreneur? <laughs> Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best-selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best-selling authors, and you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself and tell you, I know the world is waiting on your message and I would be so honored 
to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskStevekid.com and schedule a time to talk today. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. We're talking about bringing out the real you. We've talked about knowing who you are, branding and packaging in the authentic you. And now let's talk about sharing that with the world. Join me in welcoming Jackie Lappin. Hey, Jackie, how are you doing today? I am delighted to be here, Steve. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. I'm so glad to have you here with me. Before we get started talking about your business, let's talk just a little bit about you. Tell us who you are and how you show up in the world. So I am a serial pioneer, actually, and I have sort of been on the cutting edge of lots of things throughout the years. First, I was one of the first women sports writers in the world. Then I had one of the largest and uh, only uh, women-owned sports PR agency in the, in the world, and then wrote a couple of books on personal growth and really decided that my heart lay with the people that were making the world a better place. And so I rebranded my company, Conscious Media Relations, and started doing radio podcast tours because that was really what called to me. And so we've been doing those radio podcast tour now for about yeah, 15 years. And then, you know, not long ago, some of the people, eight, nine years ago, they said, can you book me for speaking gigs? And we said, well, um, we don't want to do that, but we know where they are. So why don't we tell you? And that's how I created my other company, Speaker Tunity, the speaker and leader resource company. And we run those companies simultaneously to help people get booked faster, easier, and in more places. That is my mission, to help those people who are making the world a better place through their through their knowledge and their wisdom and uh, through their caring for others and bringing them along. And so um, that's what I love to do. Now in total transparency for everybody listening, absolutely. As soon as I heard about speaker tunity, I immediately joined it. Well, it took me a week or two, but I basically immediately joined it. It's awesome stuff. And I'm really excited to be able to jump into it. But for people who don't have the opportunity of having private calls with Jackie and finding out about it, tell us in more depth what speaker tunity can do for us. So if you want to be more visible, and whether that's on podcasts and radio shows or virtual summits or on conferences or at meetings all across North America or just in your marketplace, we've gone out and done all the research for you for those speaking opportunities so that you don't have to. We know that you, as an entrepreneur or leader expert, your time is always eaten up with clients, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanted to make it a shortcut for you to get on those stages and spend less time looking for them and more time being on them. So we created um, subscription services and directories that'll give you those leads so you don't have to do that. So for example, we have 75 regional directories in the US and Canada. We have niche specialty directories if you wanna be on women's business meetings all across North America or business meetings or um, addiction treatment centers or spiritual centers, or um, you wanna talk to accountants. We we have done those niche directories. We've got 60 of those. Let's say that you want to get in a TEDx. We have got the most comprehensive directory of TEDx events all over the world, 1,200 of them. And it's so inexpensive. It'll, it'll just blow you away. Um, and so we did that. We will give you podcasts, 40 podcasts a month. We'll give you uh, 20 to 30 new virtual summits, total of 100 every single month to pick through and to submit yourself to. So we put all that together. And then we realized that people still needed a few other things, like maybe they needed training programs on how to book themselves or they wanted somebody else to do the outreach for them. So we got strategic partner that's virtual assistants that'll do that. Now, let's say you need some materials, like you need a speaker one sheet, which is one of the ways you position yourself to speaker bookers. Um, well, we can do that for you. But you pick from a template, choose colors, fill in the form. It makes it so easy. You don't have to even think about what to give us. And we've done other things. We'll do speaker um, handouts and book flyers and designs for a conference roll-up banners. Any of your graphics needs or slides, any of your graphic needs as a speaker will help you with. So if, if everything falls into, into a couple of buckets, we've got the directories and the resources. We've got the graphic design. We've got training programs. And we've got um, ability to actually get you some help 
if you need to be to do your booking. Um, and we're working on some other solutions too, like um, uh, you know a program where you can actually have speaker representation with an actual agent. That's that's in the works right now. So we call ourselves One Stop Shopping for the Speaker Leader Expert so that you can get on stages at where you need to be so that you can be attracting clients faster and easier and growing your business and changing more lives. Oh, I love that. Every single one of those things you said, I'm like, okay, tell me in total detail about it. Um, and maybe we'll have to talk about those. But, um, you know, the concept of getting booked. Now, there are a lot of organizations out there that that's what they do is they charge you to book you. Um, how much more difficult is it to book yourself on a podcast than it is to hire a company to do it for you? Well, podcasts are the least um, the least time consuming to uh, get yourself booked on. Uh, simply because, um, you know, there's lots of podcasts out there that are just really waiting and looking for guests. It's a little more challenging with speaking because it usually takes three to five contacts in order to actually get somebody to respond to you or more. Um, and that's where it really gets challenging. So podcasts, it's a toss up whether you want to do it yourself or have somebody as an expert and maybe, you know, help you. Um, uh, one of the things that the virtual assistants will do will help you craft the pitch letter. So it's impactful, um, you know, and that'll take some of the responsibility off of you. Uh, so you could either do it on your own um, and write your own pitch letter, which we have a training program for, or have the VAs ha do it with you and they'll, they'll help you craft that pitch letter. So that's really um, you know, your two options there. And of course, there's the old saying, I love it, a friend of mine actually wrote a book, you'll love the title of this book, stop doing the things you suck at. <laughs> exactly. And there's something to be said for just having someone come in and do uh, the things that you don't already know how to do. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit about getting booked. What are the kind of things that a person needs to have already in place before they try to get themselves booked? Um, let's start with podcasts and then we'll talk a little bit about speaking both well, virtual and from stage. In in general, you need to have a couple of things. You need to have a really compelling website um, and it should mention that you speak and you need to also make sure your social media is in a proper place because the first thing that a booker is going to do is go look at those things. And if they're you know not up to speed, that's going to uh, get you rejected instantly. Um, the next thing that you need to do, I have some some uh, for for pitching yourself to a podcast, you need to have a compelling pitch letter that really um, gets them excited and interested in wanting to pitch you. Or the other option is a podcast uh, introductory sheet, and that's a slick you know one pager, beautiful photo of you. Um, that states uh, why you know what you, what you speak to that that solves a problem in the world or why they would want to interview you, um, and then include a couple of testimonials from any other podcast you've been on, and then it should have the topics that you address. So either one of those tools, or you can use them in concert with each with each other, is the way that you would get booked on a podcast. And by the way, you also have a great have to have a compelling media kit after you get booked so that they, uh, the, you know, that forestalls the, the host coming back. Well, do you have a bio? Do you have 20 questions? Do you have all the good media kit will, will give them everything they want before they even ask for it. And do you recommend, I mean, I, I've seen companies do it both ways. Do you recommend just going ahead and sending them both your speaker one sheet and the, the bio or media kit um, all at the beginning, or do you kind of do it piecemeal to people? Well, when you're talking about podcasts, you um, send them the pitch first and do a follow-up. Do not give them the media kit until you've gotten booked. That's, you know, that that's the initial way to go in with that. Um, when you are doing speaking, that's a different situation. When you want to pitch yourself for a speaker, you need to have a short proposal letter, um, just no more than a page. It needs to speak to, again, the problem that you solve or why you'd be great for this audience. What are you bringing to the table? Then the next part of that letter should have some of your credentials and why you, what makes you the expert. And then the last should really illuminate more about, you know, a little bit more about what it is that you're going to be offering in that presentation. Um, and then, the you know, you want to include and say, here is my speaker sheet uh, attached. 
um, or you can give them give it to them on a, on a uh, URL. Um, and here is um, a, some video of me presenting. Now, it is always better to have you presenting in a live event in front of an audience. Um, you can use digital from sitting in front of an audience online, but it's never as effective as um, being in front of an audience. If you can get that, you know, and that, that doesn't mean you need to have a big audience. You know, you're talking to your local chamber of commerce. If you get some good video, um, then you need that to show them that uh, you are the kind of speaker that they want to have on their stage. Um, and then you close that letter with a um, a, <clears throat> um, a call a call to action. Um, either let's get together and chat chat by Zoom so we can you know we can explore how it can be of service to you. Or you know, would you consider booking me for your next event? Um, if it's a conference. Conferences often have forms that you have to fill out. So it isn't always just a pitch letter, a proposal letter. You, you're actually going to have to fill out a form. And that means that your materials need to be really crack and compelling and not sound boring um, when you're submitting them into those forms. Um, so we've, we've talked about a speaker one sheet here. So let me briefly talk about what goes into a speaker one sheet. So it's like the podcast sheet we're talking about, but it's two pages. So on the front, you'll have your bio um, and your photos. And then you'll also have, in this case, you want um, uh, testimonials from people who have booked you in the past, preferably. And then on the back side, you should have, and I strongly encourage you to have more than one, but preferably two, um, three uh, individual different presentations that you do. Now, this can be the same presentation, um, basically, um, uh, re repositioned for three different markets. Let's say you talk to a business market and then you talk to a, uh, a, a consumer market and then you talk to a youth market or something like that. Um, it could also be three entirely different topics within your niche that you know that different kinds of audiences are going to be interested in or at different levels. Um, so you need to have a really compelling title on them. You need to have a short introduction of a paragraph and then the learning points. What are the three to five learning points that the audience is going to get out of it? That's what's on the backside of a speaker sheet. Um, and it all has to be designed and look really sharp in order to really impress the bookers. That was amazing. Um, uh, you know, somebody needs to rewind what you just said make notes on everything you said and then go do it versus, um, you know, taking in that great information and then being like, now, what was it that Jackie said that one time on that one show that I was listening to? <laughs> I love that. So how much of these things can we learn in the groups in speaker tunity and how much of them are more in your, uh, your private stuff that you do? Well, we have training courses um, on how to write your speaker one sheet and um, get booked for a speaking gig that includes, you know, it's comprehensive. Uh, we have a training program on how to write your radio podcast pitch letter and how to write the subject line that's actually going to get the attention. Um, and if you don't want to sit through all of that um, and you just want to go get your speaker one sheet, you can go to Speakertunity, click on Speakertunity Sheets, and we will tell you everything I just told you reiterated over, you know, very specifically in a checklist. You can gather up all those things, uh, even the, tell you how long we want them, and then put them into a form and you'll get it back in three to five days. Um, so the speaker sheet and the podcast sheet are easy to do without you having to go through a training. But if you really want to write your own pitch letters, um, then I encourage you to take the training programs. I love that. So um, talk to us a little bit about the different levels of engagement um, all the way from just joining the basic group that you have all the way up to you doing it for them that you have available for folks. Okay, very cool. So we wanted to wrap this up in a package that made it much easier for people and got to give you a, a couple of extra benefits. So um, if you go to Speakertunity, members only, that is um, on our page, that is going to give you an opportunity at the civil level to pick one of our four subscription services that gives you speaker leads all over North America for a transformational leader. That will give you life-enhancing podcasts, 40 of them a month, or 40 B2B podcasts every month, or all the virtual summits that are looking for guest presenters, or conferences. Um, and the conferences 
there are cl close to 5,000 conferences in our database now. Um, and if so, if you're a more advanced speaker and you want to see all the different conferences that have calls for speakers every single month, we've divided it into 60 categories. So it's really easy for you to find the ones that are uh, simple in your category. Um, you can get jump into that. It's $47 a month at the basic level. Now, if you like all of those things and you don't want to just pick one, then you jump up to the gold level and you get all five of them plus our booking system. And that'll give you samples and checklists and templates to actually, you know, start the booking process for yourself. Um, and I have a monthly coaching and hot seat program that you can come to and ask questions. You can show me your your um, your uh, pitch, or you could ask how this works or what you should be doing or what the angle might be here. Um, and that jumps up to $127 a month, but it gives you comprehensive all of those different leads every single month. Then you can go Joe, up to the Platinum Program. At the Platinum Program, we throw in six regional or niche directories. So wherever you live, you can get the, the directory in your region or in neighboring states uh, or provinces, because everything includes Canada that we do, um, or uh, in the, the niche directories, uh, any of those 60 niche directories that I was telling you. So you get a total of six and you get the TEDx directory and our training programs, et cetera. Um, and that's a six month commitment. It's 297. So that's the, goal, the platinum level. And then at the very end, let's say that you just want to get it all out of your hands, but you want to have all these assets. And keep in mind that when you are with us, you have everything in your archive. So if you don't get to it right away and you want to go back and grab the things that you didn't get to, you can grab them and start at any point. So um, you could start on summits and decide, no, okay, I'm going to leave my podcast for you know, a couple of months. Now I'm going to go back and get all the podcasts and start on that. So our platinum program gives you, um, you know, had given you so many of those different things. But when you go to our concierge program, you get all of the, the resources, plus your speaker sheet and your virtual background. Uh, which we'll do for you. That's one of the other services we'll do, a branded virtual background. Or, um, and then uh, it also will give you an a, a entire year's worth of a virtual assistant to help you go after all these things. And lastly, you get a concierge. Um, Kelly O'Hara, our speaker relations uh, director, will actually help you with everything in that process. And she'll guide you and direct you and she'll look at the materials and help you get them written uh, so that they're actually impactful. And so that is a big ticket item. That's $10,000 for the year to have 20 hours of, of the virtual background, virtual assistance to help you and Kelly as well. So it basically it we, we, we work to make sure that we are at the level that the speaker is. If you're just starting out and you're an emerging speaker, we've got things for you and you don't have to go to the next level unless you're ready. Um, for example, a coach is probably gonna wanna go to the gold level. They want all those different uh, resources that we, we talked about um, at, you know, at, at, in that uh, first part of it, you know, the podcasts, the speaker leads, the conferences, the summits. Um, and then somebody else, you know, now you're, 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 you're really want to have impact. You're, you know, you're a six figure speaker and you want to have somebody help you get all that out into the world. So, you know, we, we basically climb with you as to where you are in your speaker journey. Oh, I love that. I got to really start driving into this thing and get going now that I'm a member um, and I'm excited about it. So um, I hear that you have an exciting gift for us. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what they'll get? Well, you know, there's two different kinds of speaking opportunities. Those where you can actually make an offer and sell your services and those where you're not allowed to make an offer um, and you just can give something free to get people into your community and then you can build a relationship to sell to them. But I'm a believer that even if you are making a paid offer, you should have a free offer as well during the presentation, just to make sure that whatever audience you're capturing, you're in front of, you're capturing for your email list. So you want to give them an irresistible lure that are going to get them into your email list. And so I have a great tool that every speaker should uh, review. It's called 44 Ways to Seduce Your Next Client from Radio Shows, Podcasts, Virtual Summits, uh, Conferences, and um, uh, and any any uh, other opportunities. So um, you can get, get it by going to speakertunity.com forward slash seduce. 
and that's S-P-E-A-K-E-R-T-U-N-I-T-Y dot com forward slash seduce. So I encourage you to get it. There are 44 different kinds of lead magnets that you could take advantage of that you might not have thought of. If you're still thinking it's just an email or a, and perhaps a consultation with you, you are way behind the times. There's lots more opportunities. Oh, I love that. So before I let you go, um, you know, first of all, speaker tunity, spell that for us so that everybody knows how to get there just in case. S P E A K E R T U N I T Y dot com. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and give us some words of encouragement. I mean, I know there's some people listening that have always wanted to be a speaker, but they've never really dove into it. Um, how doable is it for the newbie that's starting out? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can start just by pr practicing on local communities of people that are fairly friendly to you and start, you know, working up a presentation that and see what works and doesn't. You can also go to Toastmasters, which is a very inexpensive way to really start getting your feet wet. Or you can actually um, join some groups um, that actually do um, some uh, uh, inexpensive speaker coaching, uh, you know, from uh, uh, workshops like engaging speakers and, and some, and, uh, you know, a number of other of, of those kinds of things, or you can go out and get yourself an actual coach, a speaker coach. And there are wonderful speaker coaches out in the world that will actually take you from the beginning of your journey to your practiced and accomplished and feeling really confident on stage. So all of those, but the first thing I would tell you is don't hide your light under a bushel. If you've got something that's of value, Get out and, and commit to doing it, to being in front of audiences that are going to make a difference. There are, you know, so many people that need what you have. Just um, really uh, start on this journey to, to uh, make your offer, to learn how to get good at this, and so that you are really spreading the good word about what you do. Oh, I love that so much. And we could spend hours more with Jackie. She is a lighthouse of reference and information and all kinds of stuff. But uh, this will get you started. Jump in, um, check out speakertunity.com. You will be glad you did. Jackie, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. It was delightful to be here, Steve. Thank you ever so much. That's right. Share you with the world because you are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose. And the world needs you. If you don't share you with the world, who else is going to do it in that powerful, amazing way that the real authentic you is branded and meant and packaged all together to be able to go out and make the difference that only you can make while it's today. Doing the things that only you can do while it's today. What a great way to bring out the real you in all you do in the world and live as a thriving entrepreneur. Thanks for spending time with us. I hope until we're together again, you have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best-selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best-selling authors, and you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself and tell you, I know the world is waiting on your message and I would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskStevekid.com and schedule a time to talk today.